In this screencast, we're going to talk about how to solve first order linear differential equations via the homogeneous and particular parts. Now, there are about five or six different ways that you can solve first order linear homogeneous and non homogeneous differential equations. Um, but what we're going to focus on is how to split up this equation into the homogeneous and the particular parts. And the reason why is because first order processes. Uh, the dynamics of a first order process is always going to be as e to the minus t over tau p. So therefore these dynamics, they're very predictable. And uh, after only a handful of these tau p's, after only um, maybe two or three time constants worth of time passes, passing, the transient has died away, and your y of t at that point becomes basically completely controlled by your input u of t in terms of the dynamics. So to see this, what we're going to do is we're going to separate our equation for y, for our standard form equation, into the homogeneous and particular solutions. So if we let, uh, if we define y as your y homogeneous solution plus your y particular solution, then you can split up your first order standard form differential equation into these two. Now to see that that is true, what we can do is we can take these two equations and we can add them together. And what we get is we get tau p times the time derivative, first order time derivative of y homogeneous plus y particular plus y homogeneous plus y particular equals kp times u of t. Now note, because this is defined as y, and so is this, then we just get back our original first order uh, standard form equation. Okay, so um, if you want to solve the homogeneous equation, if I back up and uh, show that again, the homogeneous equation is always this, it never changes, right? And so in order to solve the homogeneous equation, there's one solution to this. Now, as we get to the particular equation, the particular equation changes because it changes depending on what you choose for your value of u and u of t. But for the homogeneous equation, there's always exactly one solution to that, and that solution looks like this. Your homogeneous solution is y homogeneous is equal to some constant times e to the minus t over tau p. Now, remember, if you go back to what we said at the beginning of the screencast, the dynamics of your homogeneous solution is e to the minus t over tau p those are the dynamics of a first order process. It cannot be anything different from that. So again, after a handful of tau p's, your transient has died away, and then uh, henceforth your particular solution will completely define uh, what's going on in your particular process. Okay, so let's take a look at the particular solution now. So your particular solution is going to be related directly to the input or this forcing function u of t. So it depends on the particular choice of input. Um, something that we're gonna be often doing in this class would be looking at step changes. So u of t would be this um, step change in my input. So for time t less than zero, u of t is gonna be equal to zero. And for time t greater than zero, u of t is going to be equal to this parameter a. But since we only care about what happens um, at t greater than or equal to zero, that is after this change happens, oops, that's a typo. change happens, then what we can do is we can write our particular um, equation, our differential equation for the particular solution as follows, dy particular dt times tau p plus y particular is equal to kp times u of t, but u of t is just equal to a, some constant a, right? And so it becomes evident that if you just say that y particular equals kp times a, that that actually is the solution to y particular. So if this is what, if we just guessed this for y particular, then we'd be right. And you can see that by just substituting this into there and into there, and this becomes zero. And then we get kp times a equals kp times a. Now, if I'm gonna back up just for a second, and describe it in just a little bit more um, 
systematic of a fashion. What you want to do to solve your particular equation, especially in simple cases like this, is to just guess your answer to be very similar to what your, your forcing function, your input function, u of t, is. Since this is a constant, then to get um, y particular, then just guess y particular equals some constant, I don't know, um, capital K. We don't know what that constant is, that's just going to be our guess. So we're going to substitute that constant back into our equation, so tau p times d dt of a constant, which is 0, plus your constant k is equal to kpa, which means your constant k equals kpa, but k was our guess for y particular, so that's our answer. And so that's actually the way you go about doing this, is a lot of times you just guess your, um, your particular form of u, u of t, since this is a constant, we're going to guess a constant, substitute that into y particular, and see what we get. Okay, so, um, oh, back, just for one moment, let me back up for a second. Um, remember back when I was saying that this is your solution for y homogeneous, always, it's always your solution. What we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to just always memorize this, just memorize it memorize. If you don't know off the top of your head, if you haven't already memorized that this is the solution to this equation, then please do so. Okay, so that's just something that I want you to memorize. Okay, so heading back to um, what we have is we have our homogeneous solution and we have our particular solution. And what we want to do is we want to put these two things together. So remember, our y of t that we wanted, the way we um, are going to solve it, that's equal to y homogeneous plus y particular. So if I just go ahead and substitute those two things in here, c, some constant c, times e to the minus t over tau p, that's my homogeneous solution, that's always the same, plus my particular solution, the one that is particular to the input that I've chosen for this example, which is kpa. Note that this here is transient transient and general. It's always that way. This generally will always show up. This one is long-term. It will not die out. And it's particular. It's particular to my choice of my input. So what you see is after the transient dies away, um, i.e. the exponential decays, you're left with your new steady state, kp times a, which is determined by my input or forcing function. And therefore, for first order systems, there's only one thing for the transient to do, exponentially decay away. Um, if you're wondering, well, well, what about this constant c? What is that? So in order to get that, what you're going to do is you're going to have to plug in your initial conditions to figure out what um, that constant c is. Now, a lot of the times, I didn't give initial conditions in this um, example here, but a lot of the times your initial condition will be something like, you know, y of 0 equals 0. Well, if that's true, then plug in 0 for your uh, for time t and say that 0 is equal to c plus kpa. So c equals minus kpa. Then in the end, what that means is that y of t is equal to 1 minus e to the minus t over tau p all times kp a. That will give you um, a, an initial condition of 0. Anyway, so returning to the statement that I just said at the end here, for first order systems, there's only one thing the transient can do, exponentially decay away. And actually, that's not totally true. So this time constant is some value, 1 second, 6 seconds, five minutes, whatever, that's going to determine how fast the transient decays away. But what if the time constant is negative? Now that doesn't normally make sense if you think of a time constant. It's some positive value with units of time. But um, there are some cases where the time constant will be negative. Um, you don't usually talk, call it a time constant in that case, but there could be some examples of that. And in that case, what you have, well, let's first take a look at the example of when the time constant is positive. When the time constant is positive, your transient decay transient behavior is this exponential decay, which looks, you know, it starts out as some other value and then it decays away to finally some steady state value, which is just, it stays that way forever, and this is stable. But if the time constant is negative, then instead what you get, you start out at um, 
some initial point, and instead of decaying away nicely to some final value, what you get is you get some sort of exponential blow up, right? Because the, the value, if the value of the time constant is negative, then e to the minus t over tau p will be e to some positive exponent that's always growing. And so you get exponential blow up. And this is an unstable, unstable system.